Hello, everyone. My name is Mr. Burby, and I am the seventh grade team leader. And this year, I'd like to offer you a brief introduction to our grade seven experience because you have a seventh grader, and there's a lot you need to know that's probably different from last year and any other year that your child has been in school. The grade seven is a year of transitions. It's a year where your child is growing and changing, and we have changed their program because instead of having one or two teachers, they have several now. And so what we're going to do is take you through this and uh, leave it as a video for you to look at later on as a reference. So in the seventh grade, the first thing you're probably wondering about is who your child is going to have for home base. Your child will start the day uh, in one of the following rooms. Uh, we have five teachers on our team. Me, I teach language arts. I've taught for 38 years, and I've been here a long time. And Ms. Gauvin, who teaches reading. Ms. Gabe, who teaches social studies. Mr. Dominic, who teaches math. Mr. Walters, who teaches science. And we also have a special educator named Aaron Hutchinson. And so these are the home bases that your child will be in. They'll be in one of those. This experience takes place in the morning, um, and I'll tell you more about that in a second. What you need to know is on this video page or on this slide, there is information for you. So there are emails, and there are phone numbers, and we wanted you to know that uh, if you can't remember any of these, just come back to this video. You'll find it on this website, and it'll all be there. We'll also send home a handout with all of the information. The school day begins as it did before at 7.30 when we open the doors. At that point, students are supposed to report to their home bases, and then they can go to the cafeteria, they can go to their locker, they can meet with their friends in the hallway, go to the bathroom. Basically, it's social time and get ready time until around 7.45. Around 7.45 to 7.50, we take attendance, and that's when we mark them tardy if they're not in the classroom. So for your information, this is about the same as it was last year. 7.30, we open the doors. 7.45, we take attendance. In the morning at 7.50, um, we watch morning announcements. We say the Pledge of Allegiance, and we ask students if they need a hot lunch. Uh, and at 7.50, we begin a half-hour period called RTI time, which is response to intervention. It goes until 8.20. And this is a period of time where we help individual students, often in small groups, with areas that need strengthening. A student will come in and check their email every morning to see if they have been called to an RTI meeting with a teacher. Some never will be called. Some will be called quite often. Um, it depends on how they're doing and whether or not they need intervention to help them in any of the particular areas of study. We do also spend this time at the beginning of the year, since we're just getting to know the students, teaching them some study skills, going over with them how to organize their work, how to plan their work, and uh, basically remind them what it, what it means to be a student and how to study. At 8.20, we send them off to their related arts classes. Last year, they had the related arts classes at the end of the day, but this year they have them at the beginning of the day. So it's just the opposite. It's just turned around. So their related arts classes this year, very similar to what they had last year. No big changes there. They have Mr. Estes for art. They have Ms. Ricker for a class called JMG. Mr. Hutchins teaches health. Phys ed, we have a new phys ed teacher named Mr. Morang. Ms. Snook teaches foreign language. And if your child plays an instrument, they're in band, they'll have Mrs. Netto for that. And there'll also be a study hall. So your child will have a study hall. Um, uh, most of the time, from my recollection, is they have a study hall once every three days. So it's in that rotation. So that's where that's where they'll go for the first two periods. Some related arts class meet every day, and some um, meet once every three days. 
So that's, again, the same as it was last year. So in the morning, students come back from their related arts classes at 945. And that's when we let them go to their lockers. That's when their first academic core class begins, right around 9.50. That's a snack time, too. Often when, that's when we allow students to have a snack after their first uh, two classes, really. It's, it's time. It's 9.45. So we let them have a little something to eat. We have a rotating block schedule, which is different from last year. And this is the most confusing part of this presentation. So you might want to listen to this part. This is what the rotating block schedule looks like. And you can see that if you go down to the part where it says uh, A1, B1, lunch, and C1, and you see all of those, you see Monday and Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, they have different classes. So what happens is your children will be having my class, their language arts class, four times a week, not five times a week. But they'll be having that class for longer each day, which when we look at the end of the week and the amount of minutes spent in language arts class, they actually spend more time in my class using a four meeting a week schedule than they would if it was a five meeting a week schedule. We gain several minutes this way. And also, it's less for your child to have to process every day. So it makes it a little easier for them. There's less homework every day because of this. There's less note taking. There are fewer tests to study for because of this. And it looks crazy to begin with. Um, but we know that, and uh, we are all very adept in helping students get to their next class. And after about two weeks, um, they'll know exactly where to go. So they'll have one day a week where they won't see a certain core teacher. To make it a little easier, this is a sample schedule. And we will look and assume this is for um, any child. We'll call him Joe. Joe looks at his schedule on a Monday morning. It's 9.50, and he can see that he has science and social studies, lunch, then math and writing. He doesn't have reading that day. Not at all. The next day when he comes in at 9.50, instead of having science, he has reading. Then he has science, lunch, social studies, and math, and he doesn't have writing that day. But he starts the next day with writing, and it works just like that all the way through. And so what's nice about that, too, is sometimes you get to see your teacher in the morning. Sometimes you get to see your teacher in the afternoon. Um, and as you well know, students are different people sometimes in the morning than they are in the afternoon. Um, so it's, it's a nice change for them and it, it gets them out of that, that groove that they used to get in, uh, before we implemented this schedule. It's new every day and they get quite used to it quite quickly. Lunch is served in the cafeteria from 1150 to 1210. It's a later lunch, I believe, than they had last year. And, um, they do all go down together. And it's a pretty quick lunch. They can buy milk. They can buy a full lunch. They can bring their own. It's probably one of their only social times, too. Then we have our afternoon classes. Students have two more classes after lunch before they get to go home. We will dismiss the walkers first, then the parent pickups. Um, and actually than the bus students. So everyone is out of the building by two o'clock. And uh, we try to get uh, all of that done in a pretty efficient manner. It takes a while. There's a lot of kids. There's 400 kids being dismissed at the same time. So that's a pretty um, hectic and highly organized moment and sometimes looks a little crazy, but it works. And we haven't lost anyone yet. Things we would like you to remember and that you probably need to remember. So one of the things is you need to drop your child off by 745 um, so they can get upstairs quickly by 750. If you aren't sure which bus that your child needs to take, the bus routes are located on the school website at brewer.edu.org. 
We give uh, students a chance to have a snack around 9.50. We hope they're not bringing entire bottles of soda or entire boxes of cereal. We want them to have a snack, not a meal. Many students will pull out their entire lunch during this time, and we tell them not to. This is a snack time, not a meal time. Every student will be issued a locker. They generally use it to store their coats, their sports equipment, their lunches if they bring their own. We generally don't give them a lock, but if your child wants one, let us know. We can issue them one. Students are expected to respect each other's personal space, and that includes the stuff in their lockers. Telephones. This is a modern problem. We ask that they keep their phones silent during the day and that they do not use them, that they do not take them out, that they do not look at them. If we see a phone, we ask your child to put it away. If we see it again, we will take the phone and we will leave it in the office for you to pick up at your earliest convenience. If a child needs to go to the bathroom, we ask that they leave the phone on the teacher's desk. We do that so they're not calling you from the bathroom. If you absolutely need to communicate with your child during the school day, simply call the office and we will get that message delivered to your child. But if your child absolutely needs to talk to you during the day, we'll let them. We'll even let them use their phone, but they have to ask permission and then they can call. So that's how that works. It's a safety issue. Backpacks. Students are allowed to carry their backpacks with them if they wish. Many choose to leave them in their lockers and only carry what they need to the next locker break, which we encourage, but they are allowed to carry it. Every child will be issued a Chromebook this year, and a nominal fee is going to be charged in order for your child to take the computer home. But here's the deal. If your child has technology at home, you might want them to leave that Chromebook right at school and use their own tech instead. That's your call. Up to you. Um, many students would rather not carry them home, but some would. If your child brings it home, we ask that your child charge their device at home during the evening while they sleep. Many don't, and then they come to school the next day with what's known as a dead laptop or a laptop that's about to die. And um, it's not a big deal, but we they need to find a place to plug it in, and quite often they don't sit near a plug. So we're asking that they do their due diligence and plug it in. If they bother to take it home, they should plug it in before they go to sleep. Homework and where to find it. Yep, we do give homework. It's part of our program but it's not like it used to be when you were in school. It's not that much. Often students are simply completing homework or excuse me, classwork that they started earlier in the day. In the day and our homework is listed. If we have giving homework, we're gonna list it for you on our team website. And we're gonna send home a letter with the directions on how to access that. And parents are encouraged to use that web page as the go-to page for homework. It's listed here if you want to see it, but again, we're going to be sending home uh, a sheet of paper, and it's right on our team website. We uh, will be filling those in. Usually, we fill them in um, Monday mornings, and students are also going to be given a digital planner this year that they can choose to use. It's up to them. We're giving everyone a student planner. Some kids absolutely require that planner. Other students don't. Other students use it anyway, and we don't worry about them. What happens is if your child can, starts to lose track of their work, then we'll say to them, "You, we need to check your planner. And, and we'll ask them to bring it up and make sure they fill it out. We can even have them send you a, a screenshot of what their work is for the week. So there's that. That way we can communicate. Google Classroom is universally used in our classes. It's the way for us to post everything. It's our syllabus. It's all of our work. Um, and so Google Classroom, along with uh, Infinite Campus, which is where we put our grades, those are the two sites that are going to be pretty important to your child's success. And if you don't know how to get on Infinite Campus, um, we will send home information about that. But um, you should be familiar with it. You've probably been on it before. They've had it for a while. Um, this is the first year they're going to have number grades in there as far as 0 to 100. So you, your child has access to Infinite Campus as well as you. And if you can't remember how to get on, you can simply ask 
your child to get on and show you. And so that's something you could be doing. Parent-teacher conferences come pretty quickly. They come during the week of, no of uh, November 20th and 21st during Thanksgiving break, that Monday and Tuesday. And we really like to meet with you. We want to meet with you. Um, our communication is essential to their success this year. We're going to email you information about how to self-schedule these at your convenience. The, we have meetings uh, in the afternoons. We have meetings in the morning. We have me meetings in the afternoon and the evening as well, which is kind of nice. A lot of people prefer to do these digitally because you don't have to miss work. You can simply say to your boss, uh, I need 10 minutes to go to a meeting. I'm going to take my break and, and go and do the, my, child, my kid's meeting online. And you can do it with your phone or go in your car. Some people do that. And it's a great way for us to touch base. But we can do this at any time, too. Just because we're having scheduled parent-teacher conferences during the break of November 20th and 21st, that's not the only time we can meet with you. We'd be happy to meet with you whenever you feel we need to meet with you. And we might ask you to do the same thing. Simply call us, give us an email. Um, we'll be happy to get right back to you. Email is a great way to get in touch with us. And here's how you stay in touch with us. First of all, the team website is, it's so important. It's integral to this because that's where we put all of our announcements. That's where all the contact information is. That's where our phone numbers are. That's how you can see what your child has for homework. It's all there in one thing. And then send us an email. We love having an email uh, because we can get back to it pretty quickly. We can't get back to you via the phone very quickly. You usually have to wait for a break or even the end of the day. But if you send an email, we often can get that email back to you pretty quickly. And you can also ask to see your child's digital assignment book that they're supposed to be filling out. Um, and then you can also ask to see their Google Classroom. Infinite Campus, too, is a great way to see how they're doing. So you can make sure you know how to get on that. And again, if you don't, we'll be sending information home about that. And we just wanted you to know that, you know, because seventh grade is such um, a major change, sea change in your child's life, it's also going to be a big change for you. Um, your child's getting older. We're asking them instead to have, uh, instead of having, you know, one or two teachers, they're going to have seven or eight teachers that are going to be asking things of them. And they're going to have to be keeping track of all that. And for many students, it's huge. It's a very big difference. That first trimester is uh, often very, very much a struggle for a lot of students. So we know that and we want to help them through it. And we want to help you through it. Um, there are going to be a lot of things to remember in the next few weeks. We don't expect you to figure this all out right away. Uh, take time, get used to it. And we're all pretty kind, patient people. In a month, it'll be like your child's been doing this for years. But for the first month, it's a little crazy. We're here to help you. Please don't hesitate to ask for help. Um, it's our pleasure. We want you to know we're here for you. This is uh, you're part of our team, and this is a team effort. Again, my name is Tom Burby. I'm the team leader for the seventh grade. And if you have any questions, please feel free to contact me. And thank you. And we hope to have a great year with you and your child. And goodbye.